Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Blogging ABCs. I'm one of your co-hosts, Deborah Carney, along with co-host... Vinny O'Hare. And co-host... Trisha Meyer. Trisha Meyer. And our guest today is James Martell. We've been putting him through a little bit of a... <laughs> this is our second podcast with him today, and he's uh, we're, we're putting him through his paces here. Um, now, That's today... Fine. What? No, I just said that's fine. No problem. <laughs> um, one of the things we talked about in our last podcast was guest posting. And, you know, we covered that rather thoroughly. And as we were talking about it, you know, one of the things that we do with all of our podcasts, we have affiliate ABCs, blogging ABCs, uh, merchant ABCs, and we tend to have a lot, we have guests on our podcasts. And, we have, you know, they're all on blogs. All of our podcasts are on blogs. And we wanted to talk to bloggers about considering doing podcasts, adding a podcast to your blog. It's not very difficult to do. And, you know, some of the advantages there may be to um, to adding a podcast. And I can link to uh, a, a podcast we did prior to this that explains how to do a podcast. We aren't going to get into the mechanics on this one. But um, for this one, talk about why you would do it. Now, James, you have one of the longest running podcasts um, ever. You know, Affiliate Buzz hit its 200th episode, and that's once a week, right? It's once a week now. It actually started out as uh, twice monthly for many years. We started it in 2003 and just kept with it every two weeks for, I guess, six or seven years. And then recently we've gone to uh, once a week, which has been just great. And you do this because you love podcasting or? <laughs> well, we, <laughs> you know, when, when we when we came up with the idea, actually I got to credit uh, Charles Johnston, who was somebody that I even work with closely today. He came up with this idea back in late 2002, literally three years before the word podcast was even coined, as a way to reach out to, uh, and, this, and at that time, uh, readers of my Affiliate Marketer's Handbook. People wanted to get to know me. They wanted to know a little bit more. They had questions. But there were so many of them, I couldn't begin to deal with them one-on-one. -on -one. So he came up with this idea to do a twice-monthly audio newsletter or newsletter called The Affiliate Buzz. And then we, we basically put it together. It was difficult back then. We had to create two types of shows. Actually, three. We had to give them a download. We had to give them an, uh, an MP3 for... Actually, there was no MP3 back then. We had to give them an, an audio file for low band because there's a lot of very slow internet connections and we had to give one for, for more of the higher speeds. So... We put it together, though, because we felt it was a real good way for people to be able to connect with us on a more personal level, but being able to do it en masse. And it, it's been amazing. Well, what was good about the podcast, James, when I was first starting out listening, is I could listen to it any time, and I didn't have to read. It was just there, you know? It's true. It's true. It's very. It's a very nice way to consume and learn, uh, you know, through content. And it it is. It's. I've heard stories of people that have listened to this on top of Mount Kilimanjaro. They listen to it on the plane. <laughs> They've listened. You, you wouldn't believe the stories I've heard of where people have uh, listened to it. And the and the other funny thing is when I talk to somebody on the phone, they're like, this is so strange to be talking to you because I feel like I know you. Or right. we'll meet up with them at a conference and they know our whole family. They know the kids' names. They know the cat's name. They know <laughs> they know everything. <laughs> well, so it's, a, re it's you, a real nice way to connect. I think, you, I think you've hit it right on the head. Like most bloggers, it's, you know, your blog is words on a page. And when you hear a voice... You know, like there are some bloggers that do video, but that's a little difficult still even now with all the high speed broadband. There are a lot of people that tell me they can't watch videos yet, you know, online. Mm -hmm. um, a podcast now with the MP3 files that are, you know, small enough bandwidth that anybody can, they can download them or they can listen to them streaming. Um, it really gives a personality to the blog in addition to just you know, reading the um, the words on paper, and also the ability to listen in the background, you know, while you're doing other things. Another long-running podcast is Affiliate Thing, and we listen to that every week religiously because we can just, you know, put it on, you know, on a computer that we're not using and, and let it run 
while we're, you know, while we're working. And it's like hearing friends talk in the background. And uh, again, like you said, you go to a conference and people, you know, it, it was funny after we started podcasting and we went to conferences and I'd be talking and someone would turn around and tap me on the shoulder and say, I know that voice. And I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm sure James gets that a lot too. Yeah, well, because you have a very distinctive voice. And now, Trisha, you have a, a, a website and a blog that you started a podcast for. Um, she shops around and it was very specific to your, you know, to your website and to your readers as well. Right. Um, you know, I found that certain personalities just can't come through as well in text as what they do um, voice and video. There are just certain things, and I think that my personality for sure is one of those. Y even if I put giggle, you know, in parentheses in my blog post, you wouldn't get that I truly do giggle constantly unless you hear me on a podcast or see me in a video. It's just, it's a big part of my personality that doesn't come through in the blog posts. And so I appreciate the podcast podcasts um, for my members so that they can hear me a little bit more casual, kind of having fun and kind of more in my environment because I am a talker. And so it's more natural for me to be talking than typing. So I loved that when we started She Shops Around, all of a sudden it seemed like our members knew us so much better because they were truly getting our personality. And then once you hear someone's voice, I think you hear their voice when you read their posts. Oh, totally. And so now, even when they read my regular blog posts, even if they've just heard a few podcasts that I've done, they get the posts better. You know, they get my forum posts, they get my blog posts, because now they've heard my voice, they know what it sounds like, they know my inflections, my tone, my laugh, they know all of those things. So I think now when they read, they actually hear me, and they connect with me more when they read me, because they've heard me. Well, and another thing as far as exposure goes, now many people that are going to be listening to this podcast are not even going to be listening on my website. They're going to, they won't have found it on the website. They will have found it right through iTunes or through another podcast directory. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, at the end of this podcast, we'll give ways for you to find us online. And it's a way to get traffic you would not normally get at all because people were just looking through iTunes for something to listen to and they searched on the topic or the tag that you have and you know she shops around you've got a bunch of people who would be like oh look they have an episode about shoes or you know whatever you happen to tag a podcast with and they'll be like oh I'll listen to that or people looking for more advice on affiliate marketing will go look for affiliate buzz or affiliate ABCs um, and it's a great way to drive traffic back to yourself, you know, through a whole new venue of directories. You know, there's all the blogging directories and your actual blog, but there are, again, there's a lot of podcast directories. Do you guys um, submit to anything other than iTunes? Are you on any other um, directories? Personally, I am. I've uh, submitted it to probably... I'd have to go look, but somewhere between 25 and 30 different podcast directories using uh, my RSS feed. So every time we update with a new show, all of these podcast directories get updated automatically. Okay. Nice. Um, if you can come up with like the top five that I could put in the show notes or something, I think that would be helpful. I think, um, I mean, even me personally, I've looked through and I have a tab open in Chrome that has like, you know, top 50 places to submit your podcast. And I haven't had time to go look through the list to see which places I want to do it. Um, you know, I think all of us, our podcasts are on geekcast.fm, which is um, a place for podcasts about Internet marketing. And, you know, that's that's another thing to look for are little niche directories that you can find that you can put your show notes and your podcast on. Um, Trisha, do you submit anywhere else or... I do not. Um, that's It's one of those things that I've never focused on the podcasting a lot. It's almost like the podcasting has been more incidental for me in a lot of ways and set at the focus of my sites and probably something that I need to, to listen to you and James and do a better job of. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> One, if I may, if I may interject here, one of the things, if I had to start all over again, I wouldn't build a website. I wouldn't do anything until I had a, a full-on podcast rolling, because everybody says you got to build the list, you got to build the list, you got to build the list, which is true. But what you really have to do is build an audience. 
Right. So okay. an audience is far more response or responsive if they know you, and the po- podcast is the best way for them to get to know you, and it's also the easiest thing to get them to subscribe to. So it really is, and uh, you know, with this ability to syndicate a podcast through iTunes alone is is amazing if we really think that through, and just the ability to push it out instantly and automatically to you know a couple of dozen podcast directories that also have their own audiences that we can get in front of it's to me it's a like put it number one on the list yeah i was looking through our statistics for the last um couple of weeks and pod catchers are the number one way that our podcasts are consumed and that means that they're not consumed right off of our websites they're consumed in other places And I can't always track where those other places are, which is a little frustrating, but just knowing that, you know, the top way that our podcasts are listened to is through podcatchers like iTunes and other places, um, that's an eye opener because that's bringing you new people. And then when you leave, you know, like at the end, we'll leave the Twitter. um, And then when someone listens and they send you an at tweet that says, hey, I learned something or you know hey thanks for that or um for example we haven't done an affiliate abcs in a couple months and someone you know i posted something about doing a lot of podcasts this week and they were like yay glad you're back (laughs) (laughs) um one of the things that i'm really bad at is a regular schedule and james you're on a regular schedule and i totally admire that and affiliate thing with um sean collins and lisa piccarelli that they've been doing this, you know, every Monday, you know, forever. I I don't stick to a regular schedule. James, how much do you think is important that you do stick to a regular schedule? I think it would probably increase your listenership tenfold. And because people do like to get into a rhythm, and just like you do with the affiliate thing, making sure every week you're listening to that show. Uh, and there's a little trick to getting it done. I mean, it's one thing I've noticed out in the podcasting world, there's all kinds of people that have started podcasting and have done one show or two shows. And then you look at it, they haven't updated since last August. Right. Or, you know, so they came in with good intentions, but for some th- some reason they got derailed on it and they and then they get away from it and then they feel like it's too far behind how can i pick it up and how can i get it going again well it's if you were to actually schedule a time and maybe open it up and turn it to a live show where you can get a a conference calling system like AccuConference where you can let people call in and listen and you know that two o'clock on Thursdays, you're going to have some audience, whether it might only be two people, you're going to be there and you're going to be ready to roll at two o'clock and away you go. So that's just a little trick that I've learned is just try to go live and make it available through a feed of some sort or through over the telephone so people can call in and listen. Uh, and then you'll probably be much more, uh, you know, uh, disciplined in getting your show out every week or every two weeks, whatever your schedule is. Well, and one thing that I've done to make myself have to be more on a schedule is add a co-host that doesn't live in my house. So <laughs> um, on Mondays, I do a podcast, you know, now every every day at four, I have a podcast with somebody. So like on Mondays, it's with one person. On Tuesdays, every other week with somebody else. On Wednesdays, it's with Trisha and my daughter, Liz. And by doing that, we're accountable to each other. So if we do need to take a week off, that's great. But we know that every Wednesday at 4 o'clock, we're going to sit down and we're going to either talk about the podcast and plan it out, or we're going to record at least one podcast. and Sometimes two. And sometimes two. And then we're going to have the content, and we know we're holding ourselves to a schedule. I, I hate schedules. I'm just, like, so anti schedule and anti deadline you know but this is the way that i have found is going to hold us and it brings a different voice it's not just me so like james on your affiliate buzz every week you pretty much have a a different guest right 
we no, I wouldn't say every week, but probably two out of the four shows per month, we'll try to get on a, another guest. My Coffee Talk series, which is available at jamesmartell.com, that I have a guest where we, uh, you know, where it's it might be the, um, you know, somebody from the industry where we'll get them on, just like this, and we'll have a, a good conversation about a particular topic. Uh, but yeah, guests are great. Um, now, the other thing, too, is your wife, Arlene, has a really great podcast that is um, very beneficial to a specific group of people. You want to tell us about that? Yeah, well, thank you for asking that. She actually, <laughs> at the coaxing of our, you know, when we were doing one of our live online boot camps, I actually kind of asked her if she wouldn't mind being a guinea pig and creating her own podcast so we could show how it was done. And I thought she'd say, sure. And she says, I can't do that. And she's like, no, 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 no. I can't do that. And, I, and I've learned that that's a common knee-jerk reaction from a lot of people. And, and yes, you can do it. And it's not that hard. But she put together a podcast for her website, epilepsymoms.com. And it's actually – it's a little bit different because she wasn't planning on doing a podcast forever like mine or like with yours, the two of you. Um, she or the three of you. She wanted to just – have a certain amount of information that she wanted to get out and interview a few doctors and a few important people that helped uh, us get our son seizure free through a special diet. So she put together this podcast, uh, put them together over a period of about, I guess, two months, maybe three, four months. And so there's six of them there now. They're 30, 40 minutes in length. They've been downloaded over 50,000 times, which is amazing. Yeah. And she's very, very, very well known in the children with epilepsy world now because of her podcast and it's just was just another great example of using the power of your voice and the, you know chatting with other people and just recording it so they can hear you and it really has benefited a lot of people her podcast she and her site she actually measures it differently yes it's an affiliate site yes she earns revenue from it but really what she does is she counts the number of emails she gets from moms whose kids are now seizure free after listening to uh, what Arlene has to say in her podcast nice and, and that's important, too, because it's one thing to read an interview. Like, I know a lot of people will do interviews and they'll just, like, you know, have it in a, in a blog where it says, you know, Arlene and then the question and then Dr. So-and-so and then the answer. But it's so much more real when you hear the voices, you know, uh, the inflection and the tone and the passion you know, you know that this doctor knows what he's talking about when you can hear it in his voice rather than just reading what he said, you know, or how he wrote up an answer, you know, and, and reactions and, um, and interactions of actually talking live rather than just reading something on a, on a written questionnaire. Yeah, yeah that no exchange, comparison. that exchange of ideas and podcasts is the key. You know, you don't want to just sit and listen to one person talk about the same thing over and over. You want that exchange, whether they're agreeing on topics or disagreeing or a little bit of both. Having, you know, that exchange between two or more people is what makes you want to keep listening over and over again. Yeah, I won't do an individual <laughs> podcast. I, I tried and I do not have the... I, I don't need know. Somebody to bounce off. Of. You need, yeah. I'm better when I'm talking to somebody, and just like these podcasts that we've done this week with a variety of guests across a variety of our podcasts, you know, you come up with things during the podcast that each one of you wouldn't have thought of individually, and uh-huh. um, I think that that is so important, and it gives your blog more life and uh, more connection, and just. You know, like you said, Tricia, now people hear you when they when they read your posts, they hear your voice it going along you, with it. It makes your website come to life. Right. More. Right. And I, I hope that people learn from me in the podcast. I go into every podcast thinking, you know, what are a couple takeaways that I'd like for the audience to have? But at the same time, I find that I learn something in every podcast that I'm a part of because I'm on podcasts with other really smart people who are doing things similar to what I'm doing. That's why I'm on the podcast with them. And so I end up taking away stuff myself that I'm taking notes to and thinking, oh, I didn't think of that. Oh, that's a great idea. I should try that. So as much as I want to be, you know, teaching the people that are listening and giving them ideas, I'm also learning myself through the process. So if someone were going to, so now, you know, the bottom line is we want all the bloggers that are listening to this that haven't done a podcast yet to sit down and think about what's the topic of your blog, 
And, you know, if it's a general mom blog where you're just talking about your family or whatever, just do a little round table with a couple of other mom bloggers. And, you know, again... People who are following you on Twitter. Right. People that are following you on Twitter, find a couple of them and say, hey, do you want to be on a podcast? And I always thought James was too busy to be on my podcasts. And a couple of weeks ago, he said, hey, you know, let's let's do this. And he knows I've wanted him as a guest for quite a while. So you never know if you send somebody that little direct message and say, I like what you have to say. Let's sit down and talk for 20 minutes on a specific topic. And you can do it via Skype. You know, it's very simple. There's um, programs both for Mac and for PC. And I'll link to some of those in the show notes. And, you know, you just sit down and talk. Or if it's someone that's your neighbor, you can sit down at, at one computer, you know, nothing special, and just record. And just just do it once or twice with just a, a specific little topic and just talk. And you'll find how easy it is to just give your blog some life. And, you know, even if you don't plan on doing a regular podcast like Arlene, do a series on a specific topic, you know, interviewing specific people, and then just make sure that's easily accessible on your blog. And that, you know, at the end of your podcast, you put where people can find you on the internet and you will end up driving yourself traffic and getting yourself loyal followers you know, that is something that you can't get through a search engine, that you can't even get through social media. Um, and then you just promote each other, you know, once you do it, and you give yourself a voice. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Very well said. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> um, so um, let's do our closing thoughts. James, closing thoughts. You can do it. I know a lot of people have this tendency to not like to see a photo of themselves or they don't like to see themselves on video and heaven forbid they don't like to hear their own voice. But get over it. We all have to listen to you anyways. So uh, <laughs> get a nice little headset, put down a little outline, get somebody else on the phone or on to Skype and learn how to do this. Uh, you'll be very, very happy that you did. Trisha. Yeah, think about the fresh content that you're going to be adding to your site now. If you're tired of writing all those posts and want to do something a little bit different, supplement it with a couple of podcasts here and there to give some new life to your site and give you something to get excited about too. And touch and touching on that, it'll also bring new traffic to your website because you'll get traffic from people listening to iTunes. Now, go, when they go on the computer, they'll go on your website. Mm-hmm. So. All right. Well, I think this was really cool. And again, I will link in the show notes to um, another podcast we did where we explained how to technically do the podcast. This one, we wanted to just focus on telling you why you should and get out there and do it. Um, uh, James, where can people find you on the Internet? Well, people can find my podcast over at jamesmartell.com with uh, Martell with two L's, jamesmartell.com. And uh, they can learn more about our trainings at affiliatemarketersbootcamp.com. Plus, uh, follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash James Martell. Trisha? You can find everything about me and all my sites at trisha.me, T R I C I A. And follow me on Twitter at Sunshine Trisha. And Vinny? Uh, you can find me at vinnyohair.com or on Twitter at vinnyohair. He's very transparent. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me on Twitter at twitter.com slash loxley, L-O-X-L-Y. And you can find our podcast at twitter.com slash bloggingabcs. And come to our website if you're listening to us on iTunes or from somewhere else. Come to bloggingabcs.com. And come leave us some comments. Tell us if we got you to start a podcast. Drop a link to your own podcast. Um, we'd love to hear from you. And as always, we like to thank geekcast.fm, who hosts all of our podcasts and where you can find a number of podcasts that are dedicated to um, helping you learn how to market yourself better on the Internet. Thanks, everybody, and have a great day. Thanks, Thanks Deborah.